So we're getting ready to do part two of denim and diamonds. We'll see how far I get before I start yawning or rubbing my eyes. It's a good book though and I love sharing it with you. Hello Chase, Letty said softly. He looked at her and frowned. Didn't that old straw hat used to belong to your mother? Letty nodded. She wore it when she worked in the garden, and I found it the other day. Chase made no further comment, although Letty was sure he wanted to say something more. Eagerly, Cricket bounded down to the steps to stand behind or beside her mother. Her small hand crept into Letty's, holding on tightly. I didn't know horses were so big and pretty, she breathed. Firepower special, Letty explained. Chase had raised the bay from a yearling and had worked with him long and patient hours. You said you wanted to see firepower, Chase said a bit gruffly. I haven't gotten all day, so if you want to ride, it's got to be now. I can ride him? Oh, Mama, really I can? Letty's br blood roared in her ears. She opened her mouth to tell Chase that she wasn't about to let her daughter on a horse that size. Before she could voice her objection, however, Chase quieted her fear. She'll be riding with me. With that, he swung himself onto the horse and re reached down to hoist Cricket into the saddle with him, as if she'd been born to ride. Cricket sat in front of Chase on the huge animal without re revealing the least bit of fear. Look at me, she shouted, grinning widely. I'm riding a horsey. I'm riding a horsey. That was page 62. This is page 63. For even Chase was smiling at such unabashed enthusiasm. I'll take her around the yard a couple times, he told Letty, before kicking gently at her firepower's side, sides. The bay obediently trotted around in a circle. Can we go over there? Cricket pointed to, to some undistinguishable location in the distance. Cricket, Letty said, clamping her, jaw, her straw hat onto her head and squinting up. Chase is a busy man. He hasn't got time to run you all over the countryside. Hold on, Chase responded, taking both reins in his hands and heading in that direction Cricket had indicated. Chase, Letty cried, running after him. She's just a little girl. Please be careful. He didn't answer her, and not knowing what to expect, Letty trailed after to the end of the long drive. When she reached it, she was breathless and lightheaded. It took her several minutes to walk back to the house. She was certain anyone watching her would assume she was drunk. Entering the kitchen, Letty grabbed a prescription bottle hidden from Lonnie in a cupboard and swallowed a couple of capsules without water. Not wanting to raise unnecessary alarm, she went back to the garden, but had to sit on an old stump until her breathing returned to normal. Apparently her heart had gotten worse since she come home. Much worse. Mommy, look, no hands, Cricket called out, her arms raised high in the air as firepower trotted back into the yard. Smiling, Letty stood and reached for the spading fork. Don't try to pretend you were working, Chase muttered, frowning at her. We saw you sitting in the sun. Page 64. What's the matter, Letty? Did the easy life in California make you lazy? Once more, Chase was baiting her. And once more, Letty let that comment slide. It must have, she said, and looked away. Page 66. Morning, Chase, she said with a smile. Morning. Without another word, he walked over to the cupboard and got himself a mug. Standing next to her, he poured his own coffee. Lonnie's taking care of the horses, she told him, as... If he, he need, she needed to explain where her brother was, briefly Chase won, wondered how she would have responded if he said it wasn't Lonnie he came to see. Cricket talked nonstop for hours about riding fire, firepower. It was the thrill of her life. Thank you for being so kind to her, Chase. Chase held back a short, derisive laugh. He hadn't planned to let Cricket anywhere near his gilding. His intention all along had been to avoid Letty's daughter entirely. To Chase's way of thinking... The less he had to do with that child, the better. Ignoring Cricket was the only thing he could do, because every time he looked at that sweet little girl, he saw he felt nothing but pain. Not a faint flicker of discomfort, but a deep, wrenching pain like nothing he'd ever experienced. Cricket represented everything about Letty that he wanted to forget. He couldn't even glance at her, that child without remembering that Letty had given herself to another man, and the sense of betrayal cut him into a bone. Naturally, Cricket was innocent of the circumstances surrounding her birth, and Chase would never do anything to deliberately hurt that little girl, but he couldn't help feeling what he did. And yet he'd given her a ride on firepower the day before, and despite everything, he enjoyed himself. If the truth be known, the ride had come about accidentally. Chase had been on the ridge above Bar E fence line when he saw two faint dots silhouetted against the landscape far in the distance. Almost immediately, he realized it was Letty and her daughter. 
working outside. From that moment on, Chase hadn't been able to stay away. He hurried down the hill, but once he was in the yard, he had to come up with some logical reason for showing up in the middle of the day. Giving Cricket a chance to see firepower had s seemed solid enough at the time. Would you like a waffle, Eddie asked, breaking into his musings. No, thanks. This was page 67. Letty nodded and turned around. I don't know why Cricket's taken to you the way she has. She gets excited every time someone mentions your name. I'm afraid you've made a friend for life, whether you like it or not. Chase made a noncommittal noise. I can't thank you enough for bringing firepower over, Letty continued. It meant a lot to me. I didn't do it for you, he said bluntly, watching her almost wanting to come back at him with some snappy retort. The calm way in which Letty swallowed his barbs troubled him more than anything else. As he suspected, Letty didn't respond. Instead, she brought butter and syrup to the table, avoiding his gaze. The Letty Ellison he remembered had been feisty and fearless. She wouldn't have tolerated impatience or tactlessness from anyone, least of all him. This coffee tastes like it came out of a sewer, he said rudely, setting the cup on hard, down hard on the table. The coffee was fine, but he wanted to test Letty's reactions. In the past year, in years past, she would have flared right back at him, giving as good as she got. Nine years ago, Letty would have told him what he could do with that cup of coffee if he didn't like the taste of it. She looked up at she looked up. Her face was expressionless. I'll make another pot. Chase was stunned. Forget it, he said quietly, not knowing what else to say. She glanced at him, her eyes large and shadowed in her pale face. But you just said there was something wrong with the coffee. Chase was spe speechless. He watched her. His thoughts were confused. What happened to his dauntless Letty? That was page 68. Page 73. I don't know what's wrong with Letty. Let, Lenny, Lonnie, we'll get there. I don't know what's wrong with Lonnie, Letty confessed. I've never seen him like this. Well, I'd say it has something to do with the fact that I turned him down the last time he asked me out. What? This is the first I heard of it. You and my brother had a relationship? Joy gave an unladylike snort. I wouldn't def de dignify it with a, that name. He and I, he... Oh, Letty, never mind. It's all history. Back to this so-called accident, she drew in an audible breath. I told him I'd contact my insurance company, but to hear him tell it, he figures it'll take at least $200 to repair all the damage I caused. That was ridiculous. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Oh, he meant it all right, Joy interrupted personally. I'd rather have the insurance people deal with him. Anyway, I never want to see your arrogant, ill-tempered, bronk-busting brother again. Letty didn't blame her, but she had the feeling that in Joy Fuller... Her brother had met his match. Page 75. Did Cricket's father hurt you that much? Purposely, she glanced behind her and asked stiffly, Isn't your bath water going to run over? I doubt it. Answer me, Letty. I have no intentions of discussing what happened with Jason. It's in the past and best forgotten. Lonnie was silent for a moment. You're just so different now. I'm your brother. I care about you, and it bothers me to see you like this. No man is worth this kind of pain. Lonnie, p please. She held the towels against her stomach. If I'm different, it's because of what happened between me and Jason. It's other things. What other things? Lonnie's eyes asked, filled with concern. That was one question Letty couldn't answer, at least not yet. Page 76. So she sidestepped it. Jason taught me an extremely valuable lesson. Oh, it was painful at the time. Don't misunderstand me. But he gave me cricket, and for that, she's my joy. I can only be grateful to Jason for my daughter. But don't you hate him for the way he deceived you and then deserted you? No, she admitted reluctantly, uncertain her brother would understand. Not any more. What possible good would that do? Apparently, absorbed in thought, Lonnie rubbed his hand along the back of his neck. Finally, he said, I don't know. I suppose I want him to suffer for what he put you through. Some guy I've never seen got you pregnant and walked away from you when you needed him most. It disgusts me to d see him get off scot-free after the way he treated you. Unexpected tears pools in Letty's eyes at the protectiveness she saw in her brother. She blinked them away, and when she could speak evenly again, she murmured, If there's anything I've learned in all those years away from home, it's that there's an order to life. Eventually, everything writes itself. I don't need revenge because if sooner or later, as the old adage says, what goes around comes around. How can you be so calm about it, though? Take your bath, Lonnie, she said with a quick laugh. She shoved a freshly, freshly folded towel at him. You're driving me crazy. And you say cricket asks a lot of questions. 
page 79. Shh, she heard Chase whisper loudly. You'll wake Letty. God forbid, Lonnie slurred his words, were followed by a husky laugh. You needn't worry. I'm not already awake, Letty said. Righteously, as she stood in the doorway from the dining room into the kitchen, she flipped the light and took one look at her brother, who was leaning against Chase, one arm draped across his neighbor's neck, and snapped, You're drunk. Lonnie stabbed a finger in her direction. Nothing gets past you, does it? I'll get him upstairs for you, Chase said, half dragging Lonnie out across the kitchen. Lonnie's mood was jovial, and he attempted to sing off some ditty off-key. The words barely recognizable, Chase shushed him a second time, reminding him that Cricket was asleep if Letty wasn't, but his warning went unheeded. Letty led the way, trudging up the stairs, arms folded. She threw open Lonnie's bedroom door and turned on the light. Once inside, Lonnie stumbled and fell across the bed, glaring up the ceiling. Lenny moved into the room and, with some effort, removed his boots. Chase got a quilt from the closet and unfolded it. Page 80. Across his friend. He'll probably sleep for the rest of the night. I'm sure he will, Letty said tightly. She left Lonnie's bedroom and hurried down the stairs. She was pacing in the kitchen when Chase joined her. What's the matter with you, he asked, frowning. How dare you bring my brother home in that condition, she demanded, turning on him. You want me to leave him in town, drunk? If he re revealed the slightest amount of guilt or contrition, Letty might have been able to let him go without another word, but he stood there in front of her, and all she could see was the imagined woman at that bar, the one he danced with and kissed, and fury surged up inside her, blocking out sanity. All week he'd been baiting her, wanting to hurt her for the pain she caused him, while tonight he succeeded. I hate you, she sobbed, lunging at him. He grabbed her wrists and held her them at her sides. Letty, what's gotten into you? She squirmed and twisted in his arms, frantically trying to free herself, but she was trapped. Letty, she looked up at him, her face streaked with tears. She didn't care to explain, her shoulders heaving with emotion. You're angry because Lonnie's drunk, he whispered. No, she cried, struggling again. You went to that bar. You think I don't know what you did, but what are you talking about? You went to the roundup to, to pick up some woman. Chase frowned, then shook his head. Letty, no. Page 81. Don't lie to me. Just don't. Oh, Letty, he murmured. Then he leaned down to settle his mouth over hers. The last thing Letty wanted at that moment was his touch or his kiss. She meant to brace her hands against his chest and use her strength to push him away. Instead, her hands inched upward until she was clasping at his shoulders. The anger that had consumed her seconds before was dissolving in a firestorm of desire, bringing her to life a part of her that had lay dormant for a moment she met left Chase Brown's arms nine years ago. Sounds like they're getting back together, doesn't it? Or does it? Page 88. He regretted everything. Letty hastened to her daughter's side and took her small hand. Uncle Lonnie's waiting for us in the truck, she says, her eyes skirting Chase. But I haven't even asked Chase if I can sit with him next week. I'm sure he has other friends he'd prefer to sit with, Letty answered, hiding her impatience. I can answer for myself, Chase's voice was clipped and unfriendly. As it happens, Cricket, I think your mother's right. It would be best if you sat with her in church. Can't you sit with us in the same row as us? No. Why not? Chase didn't say anything for an awkward moment, but when he did, he looked past Letty. Because I'd rather not. Okay, Cricket said, apparently accepting that withdrawal without a problem. It's time to go, Letty said tersely. One, only a few hours earlier, Chase had held her in his arms, kissed her, and loved her with a gentleness that had fired all senses back to life. And in a light of a new day, he told her as plainly as if he'd shouted from the church steps that it all had been a mistake. Nothing had changed, and he didn't want anything to do with her. After all that hurt she suffered in California, Letty thought she was immune to this kind of pain. In the span of a few minutes, Chase had taught her other ways, otherwise. Cricket raced ahead of Letty to Lonnie's truck and climbed inside for his part. His brother seemed to be taking his time about getting back to the ranch. Page 89. He talked to a couple of men that then finally joined Cricket and Letty. We're ready any time you are, Letty said from the inside of the truck. In a minute, he returned an absent glancing around before he got in. Letty realized Lonnie was waiting for Joy to make an appearance. The parking lot was des ne nearly deserted now. There were only three other cars left, and Lonnie had parked next to one of them, a PT Cruiser. Letty had no trouble figuring out it belonged to Joy. 
Lonnie was sitting in the truck with the window down, his elbow resting on the frame, apparently content to laze away in the sunshine while he waited. Lonnie, Letty pressed, can we please go? After the way he behaved in church, Letty had every intention of having a serious discussion with her brother, but she preferred to do it when Cricket wasn't around to listen. She also preferred not to witness another embarrassment, embarrassing skirmish between him and Joy Fuller. It'll, it'll only be another minute. He was right. The church door opened and Joy came out. She hesitated when she saw Lonnie's pickup beside her car. What are you going to say to her? Letty whispered angrily. Oh, nothing much, Lonnie murmured back, clearly distracted when Joy approached her car. Lonnie got out of the pickup and leaned indolently against the side, bracing one foot on the fender. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Joy said scathingly. She was nearly as tall as Lonnie, her hair styled so it was in waves around her face. Her cheeks were rosy you, and Letty couldn't help but wonder, wondering if the confronting Lonnie again was why they, they were so flushed. Page 90. Do what? Lonnie demanded. Put your foot on that truck. You might damage your priceless antique. I'll have you know this truck isn't even ten years old. Joy feigned shock, opening her eyes. Why did she ha held her hand against her chest. Is that so? I could have sworn you claimed otherwise only yesterday, but then it seems you have a problem with keeping your facts straight. You were impossible to talk to yesterday, and I can see it. Today isn't going to be any better. Impossible, Joy echoed. Me? You were the one jumping up and down, like an, acting like an idiot. Me? Lonnie tilted his head and forced a loud laugh. That's a good one. Joy ignored him and continued to her car. Lonnie had dropped his foot and yanked up, open the door truck door. I thought we might be able to settle our differences, but you're being completely unreasonable. Perhaps I am, but at least I don't throw temper tantrums in the middle of a street. Yeah, but I know how to drive. Based on what? Taking that that unsafe rattle trap on a public road should be an indictable offense. Rattle trap? Unsafe? Lonnie slapped his hat against his thigh. Just who do you think you are, talking to me like that? If you don't like the way I talk, Mr. Rodeo Star, then stay away from me. It'll be my pleasure. Suddenly, Lonnie couldn't seem to get out of the parking lot fast enough. He gripped his steering wheel as if he was driving in the Indy 500. Page 91. Lonnie, Letty ordered, slow down. When he reached the end of the street, he drove off in a very fiery ball, were licking at his heels. Lonnie... Letty cried for a second time. If you continue to drive in that manner, she'd walk home. You're driving like a maniac. Now stop this truck this minute. Didn't I tell you that woman's a living, breathing menace? He snapped, but he reduced his speed to his credit. He looked surprised by how fast he'd been traveling. I swear she drives me over the edge. Then do as she says and stay away from her, Letty advised, shaking her head in wonder. But she doubted he would. He ignored her comment. Did you see the way she laid into me? Lonnie, you provoked her. Then you didn't see the way things they the way things actually happened. Shooting Letty a look of indignation. I was only trying to be friendly. Her brother was uh, as unreasonable as he claimed Joy was. I like Joy, and I think that you were rude to her this morning. Letty returned primly. When? Oh, honestly, the only reason you came to church was to intimidate her, making a mistake while she played the organ. When you succeeded, I thought you were going to stand up and cheer. Lonnie cast her a frown and that said Letty should consider counseling. You're totally wrong, little sister. Letty rolled her eyes. Have you figured out why you feel so strongly? Page 92. Because she needs to be put in her place, that's why. And you think that you're the one to do it. Absolutely. I'm not about to let any woman get away with the things that she said to me. Calling this truck an antique, or she grinned a rattle trap. Well, she, they don't exactly sound like fighting words to me. Lonnie turned into the long, dusty drive leading to the house. You women really stick together, don't you? He said bitterly, no matter how stupid you act. Stupid? He pulled the truck into the usual spot. Yeah, like the fact that Joy Fuller doesn't know how to drive and then blames me. And what about you? You're the perfect example of taking off on some fool dream. Chase should have never let you go. It wasn't up to Chase to stop me or not. He couldn't have anyway. No one could. I wasn't going to end up like Mom, stuck out here in no man's land, working so hard. Why, she was a little more than a slave. Lonnie's eyes widened as he turned to her. That's the way you see Mom? You don't, you mean you don't? 
How could her brother be so blind? Their mother had worked herself into an early grave, sacrificing her talent and her dreams for a head of cattle and an unforgiving land. Of course I don't. Mom had a good life here. She loved the ranch and everything about it. You're so oblivious that you can't even see the truth, can you? Mom hated it here. Only she wasn't honest enough to admit it, and not even to herself. And you hate it too, he asked, his voice dangerously quiet. Page 93. I did. Lonnie climbed out of the pickup, slammed the door. No one asked you to come back, Letty. You could have turned around and got straight back to California with that. He stormed right into the house. Fueled by anger, Letty stayed in the truck. Tears were streaming down her face. She and Lonnie both had been furious, and the conversation had gotten out of control. She never should have said those things she did, and Lonnie shouldn't have either. Now wasn't the time to deal with the past. Mommy, Cricket leaned against her mother, obviously confused and a little frightened. Was Uncle Lonnie shouting at you? He was angry, honey. You were shouting at him, too. I know. She climbed out of the cab and helped Cricket climb, clamber down. They walked into the house, and Lonnie glared at her. She glared right back, surprised by how heated her response to him had remained in an effort to avoid continuing this argument. Letty went upstairs and changed her clothes. She settled Cricket with her activity book and crayons. Then they went outside and grabbed the hoe. Venturing her frustration in the garden was bound to help. Once they both cooled down, they could discuss the matter rationally. Lonnie left soon afterward, barreling down the driveway as if he could get a, couldn't get away fast from her fast enough, and she was happy to see him go. Page 96 Chase stepped on his brakes and quickly backed up. When he reached the little girl, she looked up at him, immediately starting to run to him. Chase, oh, Mr. Chase, Cricket, he said sternly, climbing out of the truck, angry with Letty for being so irresponsible. What are you doing out here, and where's your mother? Sobbing, the little girl ran and hugged his waist. Uncle Lonnie and Mommy shouted at each other. Then Uncle Lonnie left, and Mommy went outside. Now she's sleeping in the garden, and I can't wake her up. Page 100. Letty, I didn't know what to think when I found Cricket, he said, and dragged a breath between the clenched teeth. For all I knew, you could have been dead. Motivated by something other than reason, Letty raised her hand to his face, running the tips of her fingers along his tense jaw. Would you have cared? She whispered. Page 101. Yes, he cried. I don't want to, but heaven help me, I do. He reached for her, kissing her awkwardly, then... Hungrily, his mouth roving from one side of her face to the other, brushing against her eyes, her cheek, her ears, and finally her throat. They were interrupted by Cricket, who dashed into the room. I brought Mommy a blankie, Cricket said. She edged her way between Letty and Chase and draped the yellow knit blanket across Letty's lap. Thank you, sweetheart. Chase rose and paced the floor in front of the sofa. I'm calling Doc Hanley. Letty was overcome with panic. She purposely avoided the physician, whom she'd been seeing her family for as long as she could remember. Although she trusted Doc Hanley implicitly, he wasn't a heart specialist, and if she had, if she was seen going in and out of his office on a regular basis, there might have been talk that would filter back to Lonnie or Chase and cause concern. Chase, he said, calling Doc Hanley. Chase, she said, calling Doc Hanley isn't necessary. I was in the sun too long, that's all. I should have known better. You're in the sun every day. Something's wrong. I want you to see a doctor. All right, she agreed, thinking fast. I'll make an appointment if you want, but I can't today. None of it. the offices are open. I'll drive you to the hospital, he insisted. The nearest hospital is an hour from here. I don't care. Chase, please, I'm a little unsettled, but basically I'm fine. Page 102. What I need more than anything is some rest. The last thing I want to do is sit in a hot, stuffy truck and ride all the way into Rock Springs so some doctor can tell me that I got too much sun. Chase pa paced back and forth, clearly undecided. I'll just go upstairs and lie down. It's about time for Cricket's nap anyway, Letty said calmly, although her heart was racing. She did feel really terrible, dizzy, disoriented, nauseous. Chase wasn't pleased about Letty's proposal, but nodded. I'll stay in here in case you need me. That really isn't necessary, she said again. He turned and glared at her. Don't argue with me. I'm not in the mood. That was so obvious, and with some effort, although she struggled to conceal it, Letty stood and walked up the stairs. Chase followed at her as... Though he suspected she might not make it, Letty was exhausted by the time she entered the room. I'll take a nap and feel totally refreshed in a couple of hours. You just wait and see. Right, Chase said tersely. As soon as she was lying down, he left.
Ooh, doo -doo -doo. We'll stop at one ten. It's so nice to see you, Letty, Joyce said as she stood in the doorway of her small rental house. You too, Cricket, a smile lit up Joyce's face. Your phone call came as a pleasant surprise. Cricket followed Letty inside. I made some tea. Would you like some? Please, Letty said in a compact living room as always. Cricket was at her side. Cricket, I have some Play-Doh in the kitchen if you'd like to play with that. My second graders still enjoy it. I've also got some juice just for you. Cricket looked to her mother and Letty nodded. The child trotted into the kitchen after Joy. Letty could hear them chatting, although it was difficult to stay where she was. She did so the two of them could become better acquainted. Joy returned a few minutes later with frosty glasses of tea. She set one in front of Letty, then took the opposite chair of her. Cricket certainly is a well-behaved child. You must be very proud of her. Thank you, I am. Letty's gaze fell to her fingers, which were tightly glinched on that glass of iced tea. I take it you and Lonnie have come up with some sort of agreement? Joy sighed, her shoulders rising reflectively, then sagging with defeat. To be honest, I think it's best if he and I don't have anything to do with each other. I don't know what it is all about your brother that irritates me so much. I mean, last fall we seemed to get along okay, but, and I'm sorry to say this, Letty, he is just so arrogant. He acted like I was supposed to be really impressed that he was a rodeo champion back in the day. And he kept calling me a hopeless city slicker from, because I'm from Seattle. She shook her head. Now we can't even talk civilly to each other. Page 108, in case I didn't tell you. Letty double doubted Joy would believe her if she claimed Lonnie was still attracted to her. The problem was that he was fighting it so hard. You might find this difficult to believe, she said, but Lonnie's normally a calm and controlled type of guy. I swear to you, Joy, I've never seen him behave this way into, like he has lately. I've known him for almost a year, but I had no idea he was a kind of a hothead. Trust me, he usually isn't. He phoned me last Sunday. Letty's obvious surprise, Joy continued, her eyes managed to avoid her guest. He started in about his stupid truck again. Then he mentioned something about an argument with you and how that was my fault and apparently you fainted, but he didn't really explain. Anyway, I hung up on him. She glanced over at Letty. What happened to you? He sounded upset. He was, but mostly he was angry with himself. We got into an argument, which was not your fault. And, well, we both said things we didn't mean and immensely regretted. I went outside to work in the garden, and I don't know, she murmured, the sun must have bothered me, because the next thing I knew I fainted. Oh, Letty, are you all right? Page 109. I think I am, thanks. Letty realized that she was beginning to get good at exaggerating the state of her health. Did you see a doctor? Yes, everything's under control, so don't worry. Cricket wandered in the kitchen with a miniature cookie sheet. She held several flat Play-Doh circles. Mommy, I'm baking chocolate chip cookies for Chase. Good, sweetheart. Will you bake me some, too? The child nodded and then smiled shyly up at Joy. Did you ask her yet, Mommy? Not yet. Letty's gaze fo followed Cricket back into the kitchen. She could feel Joy's curiosity and wish she'd been able to lead into the subject of Cricket staying with her a little bit more naturally. There's a possibility that I'll need to be away for a week or two in the near future, she said, holding the glass with both hands. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take Cricket with me, and I doubt Lonnie could watch her for that length of time. I wouldn't trust your brother to care for Cricket's dolls, Joy said stiffly, then looked embarrassed. Don't worry, I don't feel, think I'd feel any differently toward my brother if I were in your shoes, Letty said, understanding her friend's feelings. As you were saying, Joy prompted, obviously disturbed at the subject of Lonnie had crept into the conversation. Yes, Letty said, and straightened. This isn't easy. It was a lot to ask of someone she'd only known for a little while. As I explained, I may have to go away a couple of weeks, and since I can't have cricket with my brother, I'm looking for someone she could stay with while I'm gone. This is page 110. Joy didn't hesitate for a second. I'd be more than happy to keep her for you, but there's one problem I've still got three more weeks of school. I wouldn't be able to take her until the first week of June. Would you need to leave her before then? No, I'd make sure of that. For the first time, Letty felt the urge to tell someone about her condition. It would be so good to share this burden with someone she considered a friend, someone who could calm and reassure her, someone she trusted. We got to do these two pages, and then I will stop for the night. Page 112 and 113. Uh, on the way home, 
She left Cricket with Joy so they could get acquainted. She decides to go and visit her parents' graveyard. It's amazing, and I'm going to share it with you. Hi, Daddy, she whispered. Hi, Mom, I'm back. I tried California, but it didn't work out. I never knew there were so many talented singers in the world. She paused as though they'd have some comment to make, but there was only silence. Lonnie welcomed me home. He didn't have to, but he did. I suppose you know my heart. That's what finally convinced me. I had to be here. She waited, not expecting a voice of authority to rain down from the heavens, yet needed something, except she didn't know what. What's it like? On the other side? Letty realized that she was asking such a question as if they could answer was preposterous, but after her visit with Dr. Faraday, she entertained serious doubts that she'd ever recover. Don't worry, I don't actually think you're going to tell me anyway. I, I always did like surprises. Despite her melancholy, Letty smiled. She knelt beside the tombstones and reverently ran the tips of her fingers over the names and the dates engraved in the marble. Blunt facts that said so little about their lives, those who loved them so deeply. I went to the doctor today, she whispered, her voice cracking. I'm scared, Mom. Remember how you used to comfort me when I was a little girl? I wish I could crawl into your lap now and hear you tell me that everything is going to be all right. With the back of her hand, she dashed away tears that slid unrestricted, unrestrained down her cheeks. There's so much I want to live for now, so many things I want to experience. She remembered how she joked and kidded with the California doctors about her condition. Page 113. But the surgery was imminent, and Letty wasn't laughing any more. Mom, Dad, she straightened, coming to her feet. I know you love me. Never once did I doubt that, and I loved you with all my heart. Damage, though it is, she said with a hyster hysterical laugh. I wish you were here with me now. I need you both so much. Letty waited a couple minutes, staring down at the graves of the two people who shaped and guided her life with such tender care. A tranquility came to her, a deep inner knowledge, that if it had been humanly possible, her mother would have known or thrown both of her arms around her, hugged her close, and given her the assurance she craved. I need someone. Letty admitted openly. Her burden was becoming almost more than she could bear. Could you send me a friend? She whispered. Someone I can talk to who will understand. Names slipped in and out of her mind. The pastor was a good choice. Dorothy Martin was another. Letty? At that sound of her name, she turned and looked into Chase's eyes. Isn't that amazing? Okay, okay, we can go a little longer. 117. You lied to me, Letty. His words were stark. Surprised, she turned to him and met his gaze. It was oddly impassive, and as if her supposed deceit didn't matter to him, as though he'd come to expect such things from her. When? she demanded. Just now, I phoned Doc Hadley's office, and they said they you hadn't so much as called. You're a liar on top of everything else. Letty's breath caught painfully in her throat. The words to prove him wrong burned on her lips. You don't have any right to check up on me, she took a deep breath. Nevertheless, I didn't lie to you. I never have. But I'm not going to argue with you if that's what you're looking for. Are you saying Doc Hanley's office lied? I'm not going to discuss this. Believe what you want. She quickened her steps as she turned and headed toward the wrought iron gates at the cemetery entrance. He followed her until he stood next to the trucks. Letty. She looked at him. Anger kindled in his eyes like tiny white flames, but Letty was too hurt to appease him with an explanation. She wanted to reveal a deep part of herself to this man because she trusted and loved him. Page 118. She couldn't now. His accusation had ruined what she wanted to share. He reached out and clasp, clasped her shoulders. I need to know, did you or did you not lie to me? The scorn was gone from his eyes, replaced with a pain that melted her own. No, I did see a doctor. I swear to you. She held her head at a proud angle, her gaze unwavering. But when she spoke, her voice was cracked. Oh, let's just, we can do the few more pages and then I'll call tonight. Page 122, 123, and 
I got to get back to the house, but you were upstairs sleeping, and Chase was sitting here madder than anything. He nearly flayed me alive. I guess I was looking for a scapegoat, and since Joy was indirectly involved, I called her. Joy wasn't involved at all, directly or indirectly. You just wanted an excuse to call her. He didn't acknowledge Letty's last comment, but said, I wish I hadn't done it. Not only that, she went on as though he hadn't spoken. Chase had no right to be angry with you. Well, he thought he did, Lonnie paused. Sometimes I wonder about you and Chase. You two have been avoiding each other all week. I mention your name and he gets defensive. I mention him to you and you change the subject. The fact is, I thought that once you got home and settled down, you and Chase might get married. At those words, Letty did exactly what Lonnie said she would. She changed the subject. Since you won't be taking the truck in for body work, someone needs you to tell someone needs to tell Joy. Would you like for me to talk to her for you now? Lonnie shrugged, I suppose. What do you want me to say? Lonnie shrugged again. I don't know. I guess you can say I'm willing to drop the whole insurance thing. She doesn't need to worry about giving me that fifty dollars either. I don't want her money. Letty ran one of those fingers around the rim of her coffee cup. Anything else? Her brother hesitated. I guess it wouldn't do any harm to tell her that I said I might have overreacted just a bit that day of the accident, and being the sensitive kind of guy that I am, I regret how I behaved. This, of course, all depends on how receptive she is to my apology. Naturally, Letty said, feigned a sympathetic look, but I'm sure Joy will accept your apology. Letty wasn't at all certain that was true, but she wanted to reassure, reassure her brother, who was making great leaps in improving his attitude towards her friend. Digging his fork into his scrambled eggs, Lonnie snorted softly. Now that's something I doubt, knowing that that woman that way I do. I bet that jo Joy Fuller demands an apology written in blood, but this is the best she's going to get. You tell her that for me, will you? Be glad to, Letty said. Lonnie took a huge bite of his breakfast as if he suddenly realized how hungry he was. He picked up a piece of toast with one hand and waved it at Letty. You might even tell her I think she does a good job at the church on the organ. But play that part by ear, if you know what I mean. Don't make it sound like I'm buttoning her up for anything. Right. Do you want the truck today? Please, Letty said, had another doctor's appointment and was leading up to that request herself. Lonnie stood up and carried his plate to the sink. I'll talk to you this afternoon. He put on his hat, adjusted it a couple times, then turned to Letty and smiled. You might follow your own advice, you know. What are you talking about? You and Chase, I don't know what's going on, but I have a feeling that a word or two from you would patch everything up. Since I'm doing the honorable thing by joy, I think you should do the th same thing with Chase. With that announcement, he was gone. Letty sat at the table, both hands warm around that coffee mug, while she mulled over Lonnie's suggestion. She didn't know what to say to Chase, or how to talk to him anymore. Oh, it's getting good, isn't it? This is a small one, so we'll stop after this one, I promise. I'll have to leave the paper clip in, though, because the other side is marked. 134 and 135. That secure feeling, that sense of being love, had driven Letty back to this spot now. There had been no place else for her to go. She felt more alone than ever, more isolated, cut off from the people she loved who loved her. She was facing the most difficult problem of her life, and she was doing it utterly alone. Letty knew that she could be pleased with the unexpected change in Chase's attitude towards Cricket, and she was. It was more than she ever expected from him, more than she dared to hope, and yet she longed with all of her heart to, for Chase to love her. But he didn't. That was the fact that he made abundantly clear. It was hard to be depressed out here, Letty mused as she studied the spectacular display in the heavens. The stars were like frosty jewels scattered across black velvet. The moon was full and brilliant, a madcap adventurer in heaven filled with like-minded wanderers. Despite her low spirits, Letty found she was smiling so long ago, she said under the same glistening moon, confident that nothing but good things would ever come into her life. "'What are you doing out here?' The crisp voice behind her startled Letty. "'Hello, Chase,' she said evenly, refusing to turn around. "'Are you going to order me off your land?' "'Okay, it looks like this isn't as long as I thought. "'We'll go a couple more pages, "'because this other page is not marked.' 
Okay, 136, 137. Here we go. I remember the last time I sat on this hill with you, but that seems like millions years ago. It was, he said briskly. That was the night you asked me to marry you. We were both young and foolish, he said, striving for a flippant air. He would have liked Letty to believe that ridiculous part and had been in wanting her for his wife, but the truth was he hoped with everything in him that she was con that she'd consent. Despite all the heartbreak, he felt the same way this very moment. To his surprise, Letty laughed softly. Now we're both older and wiser, aren't we? I can't speak for anyone but myself. Before he was even conscious of moving, Chase was on the ground sitting beside, beside her, his legs stretched out in front of him. I wish then I knew what to do na what I know now, she continued. If by some miracle we were able to turn that clock back to that night, I'd like to know I'd jump at your pr proposal. A shocked silence followed her words, and Chase wished he could believe her, but he just couldn't. You are after diamonds, Letty, and all I had to offer you was denim. But the diamonds were here all along, she whispered, staring up at the stars. Chase closed his eyes to the pain that squeezed his heart. He hadn't been good enough for her then, and he wasn't now. He didn't doubt for an instant that she was waiting to re leave Red Springs. When the time came, she'd run so fast that his head would spin. In fact, he didn't know what was keeping her here now. The crux of the problem was that he didn't trust Letty. He couldn't. Not any more. Not since he'd learned that she was seeing some man in Rock Springs, which is a total misunderstanding. He's taken something out of context by her little daughter, and it's just ridiculous. Unfortunately, it wasn't easy to stop caring for her, but in all those years, he cherished Letty for the only thing his love had get, gotten him had been pain and heartache. When she first came back to Wyoming, he carefully allowed himself to hope. He dreamed that they would find a way to turn back time, just as she said, and discover a new life together. But in the past few weeks, she proved him over and over how impossible that was. Chase's gut twisted with the knowledge he'd done everything he could to blot her out of his life. In the beginning, when he recognized his feelings for Cricket, he thought he would fight for Letty's love and show her how things could change. But could they really? All he could offer her was a humble life on a cattle ranch, exactly what he offered her nine years ago. Evidently, someone else had given her something better. She'd fallen for some jackass in California, someone unworthy of her love, and now apparently she was doing it again blatantly meeting another man. Good riddance, then. The guy with a mustache was welcome to her. Jealous. <sighs> Looks like I kept marking these pages all the way to... Okay, I didn't realize, so we've got to keep on going. All Chase was for for her to get out of his life because the pain of having her so close was more than he could stand. I think Cricket will remember the long as the stay as long as she lives, Letty said, unaware of his thoughts. You made her the happiest five year old in the whole entire world. Page one thirty eight. He didn't say anything, he didn't want to discuss Cricket. The little girl made him vulnerable to Letty, and once he lowered his guard, it was as if he a dam of love had broken. He didn't know what he'd do when Letty moved away and took that little girl with her. She thinks you're the sun and the moon, Letty said in a way that suggested he needed not have a, done a thing for Cricket to worship him. She's a sweet kid. That was the most he was willing to admit. Jason reminded me of you. She spoke softly. It was difficult to make our, out her words. I beg your pardon? Jason was Cricket's father. That man was the last person Chase wanted to hear about. But before he could tell Letty so, she c continued in a voice filled with pain that rem and remembered humiliation. He asked me out for weeks before I finally accepted. I'd written to you and asked you to join me in California. Time and time you would turn me down. You wanted to be you wanted me to be your own manager. I'm a rancher. What do I what did I know about the music business? Nothing. I was asking for the impossible, she said. Her voice level, her words were devoid of blame. It was ridiculous. I realize that now, but I was so lonely for you and so lost. Page 139. Apparently you found some comfort. She let the jibe pass, although he saw her flinch and knew his words had hit their mark. He said things like that to hurt her. But the curious thing was, he suffered, too. 
He hurt himself as much as he hurt Letty, maybe more. He took me to the best restaurants in town, told me everything I wanted to hear. I was so desperate to believe him that a few inconsistencies didn't trouble me. He pretended to be my friend, and I needed one so badly. He seemed to share my dream the way you always had, and I couldn't come back to Wyoming and nobody. You understand that, don't you? Chase didn't give her an answer, and she went on without waiting for one. I was still chasing my dreams, but I was so lonely, and they were losing their appeal. I never planned to go so far with Jason, but it happened, and for days afterward I was in shock. I was, Letty, stop. I don't want to hear this. Her relationship with Cricket's father was part of her life. He wanted to remove completely from his mind. Letty ignored him. Her voice was shaky but determined. Soon afterward I found out I was pregnant. I wanted to crawl into a hole and die. But that wasn't the worst part. When I told Jason, he misunderstood. He seemed to think that I wanted him to marry me, but I didn't. I told him because, well, because he's Cricket's father. That's when I learned that he was married. Married. All that time he had a wife. Stop, Letty. I'm the last person you should be telling this to. In fact, I don't want to hear any of it, Chase shouted. That was page 139, and this is 140. He clenched his fists in impotent rage, hating the man who used and deceived Letty like this. It hurts to talk about it, but I have to. I have to feel this. I want you to know that. Whatever you have to say doesn't matter anymore, but Chase it does. Because as difficult as you may find this to believe, I always loved you. As much as I did then as now. Why didn't you come home when you found out you were pregnant? How could I have? Pregnant and a failure too? Everyone would expect me and to make a name for myself in Red Springs. I was so ashamed and unhappy, and then there was nowhere to go. She turned away, and Chase saw her wipe away tears from her eyes. He ached to hold and comfort her, his heavy heart with grief, but he refused to make himself honorable to her again. She spoke of loving him, but she didn't mean it. She couldn't. Not now, when someone else was in her life. What changed your mind? What made you decide to come back now, he asked. Several minutes passed far longer than necessary to answer a simple question. Obviously, something had happened that had brought her running back to Bar E when she managed to stay away all those years. Something traumatic. I suppose it's a matter of accepting defeat, she said finally, and the years after Cricket's birth and determination to succeed as a singer left me. I dabbled in the industry, but mainly I did temp work as the years passed. I couldn't feel ashamed of Cricket. She's the joy of my life. But it took you nine years years, Letty. Nine years. This is 141, 142, and 143. She looked at, up at him, her eyes filled with pain, clearly reveled in the moonlight that seemed as bright as day. The anger was still with him. The senselessness of it all. A dream that ruined their lives. And for what? I loved you once, he said starkly, but I don't know now. But I don't now, and I doubt I ever will again. You taught me that the only thing that love brings is heartache. She lowered her head, and he saw te new tears. I could hate you for the things that you've done, he said in a low, angry voice. I think you do, she whispered. Chase hadn't known what to expect, but it wasn't this calm, almost humble acceptance of his resentment. Maybe the proud, confident Letty was gone forever, but he couldn't believe that was true. Every once in a while he saw flashes of the old Letty just enough to give him hope. I don't hate you, Letty, he murmured in a tormented whisper. I wish I could, but I can't. I can't. Chase intended to kiss her once more, then release her and send her back into the house. It was late, and they both got, had to get up early. But their kiss sparked, and then they caught fire leaping into sudden brilliance. She sighed. The sound was so soft, so exciting, that Chase knew he was at lost even before he pressed her against the cool, fragrant grass. Lying down beside her, Chase felt helpless, caught in a maze of love and desire. He tried to slow his breathing, gain control of his senses, but it was impossible, especially when Letty raised her hand and stroked his shoulders uh, through the fabric of his shirt and then glided his fingers around to his back. Chase was engulfed by his love for her, lost, drowning, and it didn't matter. Nothing did, except for the warm feeling of her beside him, longing for him desperately as he longed for her page 142 and 143 and then we're stopping at 143 for tonight again and again he kissed her and then they paused to collect their senses she eased her hand around his neck and gently brought his mouth back to hers they needed 
Their need for each other was urgent, fierce. Chase couldn't get enough of her. He kissed her eyes, her cheeks, forehead, and tenderly nuzzled her throat. Eventually, he released her and sagged breathlessly against him. No other woman affected him the way Letty did. Why her? Of all the women in the world, why did he have to love her? For years, she rewarded his loyalty with nothing but pain. But it was, wasn't distress he was feeling now. The pleasure she brought him was so intense that he wanted to cry out with it. He kissed her soft, gasping breaths mingled into his own. Chase was shaking, and he couldn't seem to stop. Shaking with anticipation, desire, shaking with the resolve not to make love to her, not to claim her completely, because once he did, he'd never be able to let her go. He wanted her, but he needed her to love him as much as he loved her. A love that came from their hearts and minds, not just passionate dictates of their bodies. His jaw tight with restraint. He closed his hands around hers and gently lifted her away from him. Chase, she whispered, perplexed. If she was confused, it had nothing compared to the emotions churning inside of him. He always loved her, still did, and yet he was turning her away, and it was agonizing. She wanted him, and she let him know that, but he wasn't going to make love to her, not now. Letty, no. She bowed her head. You don't want to make love to me, she whispered tremulously just one time. No, he told her bluntly. It wouldn't be enough. He stroked her hair and kissed her gently. Then he realized the true significance of what she said. She was only after him to make love to her one time. You're going away, aren't you, Letty? He felt her tense in his arms before her startled gaze found his. Who told you? Without responding, he pushed her away from him and stood. Chase, no one told me, he said. The love was and tenderness he felt evaporated in the heat of her betrayal. I guessed. Well, we've got so many questions and we'll pick up on page 153 tomorrow night. Does she leave? Does she leave because she's scared of what she feels for Chase? Or is it a medical reason? Does she take Cricket with her? Or does she leave Cricket with Joy? Does she leave Cricket with her brother Lonnie? Does she leave Cricket with Chase? All these questions to be answered in part three of the moments of Didham and Diamonds. <laughs>